told you that you change history? Yes, you and you and you and you. Now, maybe you're sitting there thinking, of course I can, or I already have. But I think probably more likely you're thinking, who? Me? How could I possibly do that? Or maybe I can, but it sounds like a lot of work. And I have the SATs next month, so maybe later. So let's simplify it a bit. What if I told you that you can change history simply by using your cell phone? All right, maybe you could fit that in before the SAT. Now, I know that many of you are probably still skeptical, so I think it might be beneficial for us to take a closer look at what history actually is. At the beginning of each new school year, I like to ask my students to reflect on this quote as a way of trying to better understand the subject for the next several months. Although the past cannot change, history does change. Now, many of my students stare at the quote in public expression I see on many of your faces right now, but some of them are able to comprehend the difference. The events of the past cannot be changed or undone, but the way we perceive them, write about them, even whether or not we forget about them entirely, does continually change. Consider the irony in the fact that whoever was the first person to say this quote has since been forgotten by history, and therefore it's simply attributed to anonymous. Now, the textbook definition of history is that it is the study of the past. But for me, at its core, history is simply a collection of stories. By hearing these stories, we are able to learn more about ourselves and others. They guide our decision making and help to shape our perception of the world and the role that we play within it. I'd like to tell you one of these stories. My mother grew up in a small town in Missouri in the 1960s. And when she was in the second grade, her parents decided to throw her a birthday party. Well, she invited all of her friends and classmates, and like any young child, was eagerly awaiting the big day. Well, the day of the party arrived, and my mother was shocked to find that only one of her invited guests actually showed up. Now, in spite of this, my mother and the other little girl had a wonderful time. And my mother still recalls that this was the most memorable birthday party she ever had. And she actually still has the necklace she received as a gift. Soon after, my mother realized that the reason that only one of her guests attended was because she had invited an African-American girl at a time when it was considered to be improper. And it was no coincidence that this was the only child who showed up that day. It wasn't until years later that my mother realized what it meant for her parents to have encouraged her to invite her friends, regardless of the personal and professional consequences they must have known would result. Now, did my grandparents' simple act of tolerance, a decision that helped to shape my mother's and later my own moral development, change history? Most would say no. Its impact was far too small. And there were many other well-known historical figures who accomplished far more during the civil rights movement. But for me, hearing my mother's story not only helped me to better understand my mother, how she came to be the accepting and open-minded woman I know her to be today, but to also shape my own values and my perception of the world. Sometimes I wonder, does the girl from my story also remember that day as being important? Does she tell the same story? What have others learned from her experiences? Benjamin Franklin included a proverb in his Poor Richard's Almanac that perfectly illustrates that the smallest change can have a monumental impact. A missing nail in a horse's shoe sets off a chain of events that culminates in the loss of a battle. And, as a consequence, the kingdom is lost as well. Now, the application to history is clear. 
We have little ability to anticipate how large or small our impact will actually be, but it is crucial that our stories are told. What if my mother had never told me her story? Would I still be here on this stage today in a foreign country so far away from my own home? What if Anne Frank had never kept a diary or if no one had ever heard Abraham Lincoln's Eastburg Address? Now their stories and the stories of Gandhi, Martin Luther King Jr., Nelson Mandela, and many other heroes of history, these are the stories that are told over and over again. And their stories are certainly worth telling, I have to wonder, what about those stories that were never told? Or the stories that have since been forgotten? Or worse, the stories that someone else deemed to be less important along the way, and therefore not deserving of any sort of mention in the future. to recall that until relatively recently we relied on a select few individuals, those so-called victors of history, who were responsible for choosing which stories were deser deserving of historical recognition. And until relatively recently, in order to access those chosen stories, we had to physically go to an actual library and search for an actual book in what was called a card catalog. And I'm sure that many of you especially today's students, will find that this, uh, this image inspires a fair amount of fear and confusion. And I personally remember that this was a very daunting task, and it required me to know not only the title of the book, but also the author in order to find the book I was looking for. Thankfully, we live in a day and age when we no longer have to wait for someone else to write history. And we certainly don't have to physically go anywhere or manually search for an actual book. The internet has ensured that we are more interconnected than ever before. And the stories of the past no longer have to risk being forgotten. Now I'm sure many of us have been told that once you put something on the internet, it's virtually impossible to get rid of it completely. Many of us have probably been told this as a warning. However, in this case, it's supremely positive. The internet gives us unprecedented access to the lives and stories of others. And again, the stories of the past no longer have to risk being forgotten. And even though the internet occasionally, or sometimes, is used for the wrong reasons, it can still be a powerful tool for change. Social media provides us with a platform for us to share the stories of those individuals who have made significant contributions in the lives of others and to celebrate those accomplishments. As long as we acknowledge that their stories have power, the ability to inspire others to become better or do more, this is how we change history. Facebook alone has over 1 billion monthly active users, and this is a staggering number if we stop to consider that a mere 30 years ago, most people were just learning how to navigate the internet. Simply scrolling through your newsfeed can open up a veritable world of inspiration. For example, this is Yusra Mardini. She's 18 years old. And back in 2015, she and her family were fleeing from their home in Syria. Now, the motor of the boat that she shared with 19 other people stopped working, and the boat threatened to capsize. Well, Yusra is a swimmer, so she immediately jumped into the water and helped to push the boat to shore. This was a three and a half hour ordeal. Now, Yusra is living. Germany and training for the Refugee Olympic Athletes team, which is an elite group consisting entirely of refugee athletes. Her story has been heard by over one million people, and her heroic actions will undoubtedly continue to inspire many other people in the future. This is Mike Carl. Mike used to be homeless, and his experiences inspired him to found the nonprofit organization homeless angels in Michigan. 
Now, through his organization, he was able to renovate a hotel to provide shelter for the homeless. And currently, they offer 147 available beds. And Mike hopes to one day own this hotel so that he can continue to help even more people. You might even come across one of these stories of the past that was considered to be less important. This is Rosalind Franklin. In 1952, she became the first scientist to ever photograph DNA. And this proved to be a crucial step in actually being able to determine DNA structure. Now, the two scientists who were actually credited with this discovery, James Watson and Francis Crick, won a Nobel Prize for their accomplishment. But they only mentioned Rosalind Franklin's vital contribution in a footnote in their articles about the discovery. Rosalind's story is a perfect example of someone whose story was deemed less worthy by those so-called victors of history who thought that a woman's contribution was less significant and therefore not worthy of mention at that time. Now, Rosalind's story no longer has to be a footnote and she can take her rightful place in history. Simply reading the comments on these three stories indicates how inspiring they really are and it is more than probable that out of the thousands or even millions of people who have heard these stories, that many of them will actually go on to change lives in similar ways. These stories represent a fraction of all of those that can be accessed simply by using social media, which is something that most of us already do on a daily basis. At the very least, you can help others to change history by continuing to share their stories to ensure that they will be remembered for years to come. Many of you have powerful stories of your own. Maybe you're improving the lives of others, or setting an example for a future generation, or showing bravery in the face of adversity. Whatever your story is, it is up to you to make sure your story is told. Now, maybe you're not convinced that you can change history, but consider this. To change is simply to make difference. And the world is already a different place because you're in it. The day you were born changed the stories of every single person you will ever encounter in your lifetime. You have the power to determine how many people will tell your story in the future. A commonly repeated maxim is, be the change you wish to see in the world. Well, I think this can be expanded to, be the change you wish to see in the world and put it on the internet so everyone else can see it too.